How's it going guys, I'm your host Karban Gaming. welcome back to this week's Adventure Quest video and for today's video we have a very exciting new quest, okay? So it is the War Between Shadows Part 2, Once Upon a Scheme, okay? So we've already did Part 1 two weeks back, so now we have Part 2 and I'm very excited to see what this quest brings along. Also, there, uh, before I go through that, there are new items inside of the limited time shop, so let us go ahead and check that out first because I always forget to do that at the end of the video. Okay, so we'll go ahead and check that out first. Okay, so we have some uh, white dwarf uh, light axes or something. Okay, so there's a uh, boreal white dwarf light of zilotry. Okay, so this one 5,940 tokens ice axe. The fame axe of Ardix now further enhanced by the powers of a white dwarf star. This weapon swaps between melee and magic and also deals boosted damage but causes you to take boosted damage as well. Just look at that artwork guys. Oh my gosh. That is some pretty amazing artwork. Very, very cool. And we have a wind version as well. Uh, okay, so they look exactly the same. Not gonna lie, I was expecting something a little different, but unfortunately, they are the same. Okay, there is a light version as well, radiant, and then we have a uh, fire version as well. Okay, so the if you guys have the blood zerker blades or the uh, blood blades those will work better they do slightly more damage but the only element here if you guys notice that doesn't have a blood blade or blood zerker blade yet is the wind one so the only one that's worth picking up here in my opinion is the wind one if you guys have the z tokens to spare i recommend picking up the wind version of this because the wind version we don't have a blood blade yet and this essentially works like a blood blade okay you take a little bit of damage each time you attack but at the same time you deal boosted damage comparing this and the blood blade i think the blood blade does a teeny little bit more damage but for the wind element since we don't have a blood blade for that element yet this is currently the best in slot uh damage for wind weapon i don't know if they will ever release a wind blood blade okay if they do then this will technically get outdated and you can uh blood blades are usually in the rare shop so it'll be quite a waste if they ever do decide to release a wind blood blade but that being said though um i don't know i honestly don't know if they will ever release one so if you are will i would consider picking this up and not you know not just for the uh damage itself but the i think the artwork looks amazing as well so should i get this i do have 171 thousand tokens to spend why else am i going to spend it on right so you know what i think we are going to buy this just because i can and if i'm not wrong i think my weapon inventory slot is already fully maxed out yes it is fully maxed out so we have to uh get a shared vault slot instead so i'm going to buy uh no i don't need to buy another one okay so i'm going to shift one weapon over to the shared vault i don't know which weapon do i not use i have a whole bunch of weapons here that i probably don't ever touch or won't ever touch but <laughs> we are just going to put a random one inside there i am a hoarder guys look at look at the amount of crap that i have in my inventory but yeah let's go ahead and get this best in slot damage for wind weapon tempest white dwarf light of zilotry okay very very nice if your weapon i recommend you to get it uh majors i would say don't get it rangers don't get it because it does melee damage only unfortunately but if you're a warrior then yes please do go ahead and get this so let's see do it we are actually not going to be using this okay but uh when we revisit the warrior build maybe sometime in the future i don't know when that will be but uh this will be good okay and it's something best in slot right and obviously i can't pass that up i mean what else am i going to do with uh, over a hundred thousand c tokens i'll probably never finish the tokens but yeah okay so let us continue now with the main part of the quest do you want me to show off the weapon okay you know what i think i will show off the weapon a little bit first there is no special to the weapon but i think maybe you guys want to see the artwork or something or see it in battle so you know what i'm just going to show the weapon keep in mind i don't have any strength right now uh strength stat so it's not going to be as great as you would expect it to be and i don't think i want to boost up everything or show you like change my stats just to do this or uh with all the proper boosts and all that so i'll just showcase it uh to you guys in battle so you guys can roughly see how it looks like i mean even if you're not getting it for the artwork do get it for the effect though it's a very very strong effect all right and i'm a big fan of big numbers so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and check out the stat trainers okay combat practice let's go okay weapons we'll bring out the oh man oh man that is so cool dude oh oh wait what oh majors majors you can get this too 
Wow, I was mistaken. Sorry, I take back what I said. Majors, you can get this too. You can convert it to magic damage. Wow. Okay, I guess this makes it better than a Blood Blade because you don't need to get two versions, one for uh, the Blood Mage version, one for the Blood Zerker version. This essentially combines both of them, uh, but you know, it doesn't do as much uh, com compared to a Blood Blade. But honestly, I think the damage is pretty insignificant. Wow, okay, nice. So we have melee magic and magic damage as well. Really cool. I wish they add that in the description though. Did they add that in the description or did I just, uh, did I just miss, miss it out? Oh yes, they, they did add that in the description. Sorry guys, I am blind. As always, I'm I am always blind in the videos. I don't know why. <laughs> and you guys always have to point that out to me <laughs> in the comments below. But yes, I figured it out on my own this time, okay? So yes, uh majors or warriors do go ahead and get the weapon. Nice, we might actually use this for our mage build in the future. I don't know. Right now I'm having fun with the tome mage build, so maybe not that soon, but yeah, this is a great weapon. We'll consider picking it up if you are playing a fully offensive mage or a fully offensive warrior. Now, let us go to today's event. War Between Shadows Part 2. Hollow. Okay. Alright, I'm done with the final spot. Thanks for sticking around, Corbine. It's a lot easier to expand our security perimeter with the added backup. Though I'm sorry our intel went dry. I'm happy to help Hollow. Don't worry about it, though I might have to ask for a hand getting back home faster. Everything you reported going away before I arrived makes me think it could all just be a distraction, but... Well, even that would be strange if Rebus isn't usually subtle with his distractions. And there were two different anomalies here. The Transmorphers that are back on his side and the undead they are hunting them, even though those were only showing up near the far west so far. Undead that Erebus can't control showing up everywhere, the shape makes a move, then both of them disappearing? From what I've seen, that creep UJ goes for ambiguity and taunting rather than little distractions, so I agree that things are a little strange. They have been for a while too, the network stragglers have completely turned tail. The only reason we are getting to expand our detection range at all is because they've been pulling back, from this side at least. We never did find some pots, but the agents aren't fighting us or each other lately. Not that it's safe, you can still count on a fight for your life if you get too close to a camp or outpost. They'll sooner vaporize an area than risk letting witnesses get away, give away their location. Talk about Twitchy, will you say he's going to have a handful turning more of them to good? Do you think that might be why the activity died down? Maybe the Transmorphers and Undead got too close. Hmm, I don't know, there was an outpost nearby, but they actually evacuated it weeks ago. But you're still onto something, they might have moved in. It was in the big ruins, over those hills in the distance. Wait, ruins? I was in the exact area before, helping out some dice rolls with a uh, turncoat that was abducting Melza. There was a crashed airship, but nothing like old ruins. I don't know what to tell you, it sounds about right with the airship and the Melza, and a couple of dice rolls told us about you helping with that. But every patrol drone that got too near the area recorded two things. Network agents camped out in some local ruins, and network defenses shooting it down. I, I remember this very clearly. It's possible that uncreation is involved. We have different memories about it though. Uncreation. Could we be seeing the devourer again? Wow. Okay, let's see. Maybe it happened while I was out of commission from what happened in the Hall of Memories. That will sound like a stretch, but there are network rogues that sided with the devourer to learn about uncreation. With even worse things out there, I'll say it's worth looking into the ruins as long as we are sneaky. Agree, I still need to get back to Terminal soon, but let's check this out while we are here. There's still this is way too suspicious to just let it sit. Okay, let's see what we have here. Where bet? Light. Okay, so we're gonna hit him with light. Uh pets, let's do eternal dragon of time. And I think this monster will just whack him normally and then for the other one okay no, maybe not. 5,000 HP, yeah, let's just try and get this down quickly. Let's start with proper rain first. Arcane Amp. Then we'll do our standard stuff. Is he weak to Earth? Uh, Earth 125%. Uh, that's good enough for me. We got Una Poka and the Intellect as well already, right? Okay, so Doomquake Minions. Let's do uh, Essence Hop. Okay, need to gain more SP first. Power Gauntlet, Crush, nice, we got it. And time for some Shadow Feeder fun. Let's see, how many turns? Two rounds, I think that's enough. Yeah, I, I honestly think that's enough. I don't think we need to go that far with Shadow Feeder for a regular monster. You already purple ranged, right? Okay, so let's do 
uh, fidget zor back door. Whatever this thing is, it's half bad. No one knows what the other half is except for hungry. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Whoops a daisy, I forgot to equip Celtic Wheel. Uh that's fine. Yep, I forgot to equip Celtic Wheel. Whoopsies. Oh well, that's okay. Uh let's just finish this guy. No, you know what? Let's draw mana. Let our pet and guess do the work. Can they kill him? Yep, nice. Next one, Wind Warp Storm. Oh, this one probably has a lot of MRM. Yep, I'm right. Okay, so we have Darkness and Wind Monsters. Interesting. So, let's see. A wind Armor will be... What is our Armor of All again? It's Ice Element, right? And after so long, <laughs> I'm still having trouble remembering. Uh, yeah, Fujin Armor. Yes, that's right. Fujin Armor. Mecha Lord, Haunted Dragon Lord. Also, I heard that the Fruitcake Zark is coming back to the Void next week. Very excited for that. Because I can finally get the Fruitcake Zark uh, pet or guest. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, I've been waiting a long time for that. And finally, it's about to come back. So, very, very excited for that as well. Pets, uh, we'll do Earth. Earth is a dead protein. Let's go. Three hits, okay. Vulnerability, inflicting attack. Let's do Purple Rain first. Now I'm going to do the Moonwalker's Grace here because this guy has a ton of MRM. I want to make sure I land all of my hits. Nice. And I don't think we need too many rounds of Shadow Feeder. Two rounds. Yeah, I guess two rounds is good enough. <clears throat> okay, revert everything back. Let's try and gain a little bit of MP first. Yep, make sure we have enough for the double cast. And we want to equip a uh, Zorbeck doll. Oh, and let's not forget our Celtic View shield. Imbue, and now we will probably one shot it if we manage to land all our hits here. This is the earth damage. Of course, the ugly artwork of Twilly. <laughs> The first Twilly inside the game. Ooh. Two misses. That's not great. Uh, we'll switch back to Neko armor. Wait, no. Not Neko. Fujin armor. Sorry. Let's do our... Uh, what's that? Dragonlord's wheel shield and... I think we'll rely on our pet and guest to do to finish up the job. Yeah, let's, that's what we'll do. I think we'll try and regain a bit of SP here. And then we can try and get Frigid Zorbeck door out to boost their damage. Let's just do draw mana. Oh, nice. Lucky search by Mist. That's fine. Okay. Done. Easy. So, got a full heal. So, it's two monsters, full heal. Okay. Undead spell sword. Oh, this one. Does he hit with fire first or darkness first? I can't remember. God, I hope I don't get one-shotted. Let's see here. I think he hits with fire first, right? If I'm not mistaken. Okay, we get the first goal, that's nice. In life, this individual was skilled at both the Blade Arts and the Mystic Arts. They have been called back from the grave and now use their talents in service to a Necromancer. Okay. Nice that we got the first turn. Uh, if we get lucky, you probably don't have to care what stuff he hits us with. Uh, not very... Earth is not very good. Maybe you'll switch out to Shogun and Nansatsu, that will do more damage. Want to make sure we kill this guy in one turn. And let's do... Okay, I think this is enough. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad that failed. Oh man. Wow, I, I was being way too careless, dude. I didn't even see. Okay, apparently nothing propped. Huh. Nice, that's much better. Wow, I was being way too careless there. I'm glad it didn't proc. Holy crap. <laughs> I did not expect it to fail though. I was not expecting it to fail. <laughs> uh, yeah, so don't be too overconfident or you might just end up screwing yourself. Light. Can we one-shot this guy? I think we can. 
Yep, okay, we can. Now let's switch to this first. And we shall just draw mana here. Done. Could probably just skip it and let the pet finish it, but I guess that'll work too. Rotting Corpse Zombie. Okay, so mostly darkness monsters here. Ooh, did this guy get a Christmas makeover? What's with the <laughs> green and red? Oh, man. Okay, so we are definitely going first for this one, but... Uh, yeah, since we are definitely going first, I don't really have to care, right? This zombie smells excessively bad and can regenerate more than other zombies. Okay, so it definitely looks like he got a, some sort of Christmas makeover. What's with the green and red? I don't understand. Oh, interesting. Uh, we can do... Earth is not that great, so we'll stick with this. Oh, he endured. Damn it. That's alright. Uh, he resisted. Wait, it's against the monster's intellect, right? He has zero intellect. How do he resist? Intellect or levels? It's one of them. Okay, we got two rounds already. That's good enough. And let's do... What do we want to do here? Zorbeck door. Now, let's finish this guy with the... Light damage, the good. Okay. Just draw mana here. And done. I'm even more certain that this wasn't here before now. I will absolutely remember ruins like this. This looks kind of Teledotian. Ooh boy, that's concerning. Tell me about it. I have to call the Knights of Order. They let us know to alert them of any remnants like these ruins so they can completely remove them. Anything else will feel excessive to wipe from the map. This, this can go. Before I get back down bad memory lane though, those were undead alright, but definitely not the ones our system spotted fighting transmorphers. Doesn't fit the western reports either. Could have just been a ne network necromancer. They are probably stuck using artifacts to power their spells, so something must have been worth draining those. Let's see those tracks. Something like a turf war with angry rhino men that have their own undead to deal with now? I guess that would do it, but that's awfully specific. What gives, what gives you that idea? The angry rhino men escaping towards us and the undead closing in behind them. Oh. Take hollow into battle. Uh, shall we test out to see how hollow is like? Yep. Let's see. I mean, this is a new quest, so I'm excited to see if they did anything special to him. Water wielding dice. Oh, so that's what they are. Ooh, natural bout lets them shrug off damage. Damage reduction 52. Okay, interesting. I've not seen this before. Very high melee defense at 74. This is definitely a new monster. Formerly a warrior shaman of the Dice Rose, this foe is now a rogue agent of the network. Who knows what mad scheme they serve in rejecting their master's ultimate purpose. So we want to use energy against them and we'll go into our water armor. We can probably one-shot this guy, but I want to see what... Yeah, I kind of want to see what uh the... What do you call it? What's his name again? Hollow can do. And I'm saying it so simply because uh, he is one of the... In fact, he's the lead developer of AQ, if I'm not wrong. Okay, so let's do ball lightning here. I, I want to see what Hollow can do. Okay, yeah, Hollow, you did nothing. Nothing at all. Come on. Okay. Oh, it's the stupid damage reduction. Oh, damn. That's why. Okay, no more fooling around. Okay, so hollow... Okay, I mean... I'll be fair, it's 40% darkness resist coupled with the... Whatever that... Uh, the damage reduction. I guess hollow is dealing zero damage. Huh. Come on. I just want to see what hollow can do. Uh, I guess we won't be finding that out. Okay. Light. Alright, alright. So you don't want to show me what you can do, Hollow. Huh, probably shouldn't have brought him along. 
Uh, we'll keep him for a while longer. Maybe there is a monster later that we can use him for. But if he's just going to do darkness damage, then he's pretty much useless in this quest. If they are all just going to have low darkness resistors like that, uh, that is disappointing. So what is the point of the hollow gas again if he's not going to be able to deal any damage? That is weird. That is so weird to have him here and not be have him be able to do anything at all. Okay, that's enough. Uh, come on. Okay. I think we'll just cast it in this armor. We don't have enough for a double cast. And I don't feel like using pixel either either. So we'll just do this. Let's just attack. Let's do the good. Okay. Whoops, a daisy, I forgot. Out of mana. Yeah, even in the boost, Hollow is still doing nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. Very, very disappointing, and we are not getting healed. Oh, I think if you do zero damage, it doesn't heal you. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Eternal Dragon of Time. Still get an extra turn after this, right? Okay, never mind, we don't need it. Done. Please, Dissonant Draco Leech. Not a darkness creature. Seriously, what is the point of Hollow in this quest? <laughs> oh my lord, what in the world? Holy moly. Harm damage, wow. These strange Draco Leechen have cropped out around the far west and now elsewhere in the world. They are strangely hostile to other undead and extremely hostile to anything akin to a shadow. Okay. Oh, wait. Anything akin to a shadow. Is this a hint? Maybe I shouldn't be using this, like, shadowy looking armor. It's, it's technically not a shadow armor. Like, it's just a darkness armor. Huh. Oh, man. It hit through. It did harm damage. Wow, okay. This, this guy is dangerous, man. Very, very dangerous. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, crush. Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to say goodbye to Hollow because he's not going to be of help here at all. Instead, we'll bring out Shogun and Ansatsu and I don't want to risk it because I don't know what this Draco Leech... What else this Draco Leech can do? Uh, have we done Shadow Feeder yet? No, not yet. Okay. One round? Huh. Not very good. Need more. Please give me more. Three rounds. Okay, I think that's the best we can manage. Uh oh. Okay, that was close. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to do spell casting for the first round, and then after the second round, we'll just try and heal up. All right. So let's do this. Let's do imbue. To hit him with energy or fire. I think energy will do a lot of damage, right? So we'll do energy. And then we can... Okay, wait. Pets. We want to hit him with energy or fire as well. Okay, so we'll just do energy, I guess, to heal up our HP. I don't know how much damage this guy will do, though. Uh, thankfully, he doesn't have any luck. So I don't think he can do a lucky strike. That's good news. Okay, so I don't want to risk it here. I'm going to switch back to Twilight's Harbinger. No, no, no. Uh, I'm going to switch back to the darkness one here. If he hits with harm, I guess it doesn't matter which armor I use, but you know, just in case he hits me with darkness instead. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to drink a health pot here. And full assault. Full assault again. We could do the blocking one. I think that will work against this monster, but I was not expecting that from a regular mob. I don't think this is the boss though. Ooh, nice. Okay, nice, nice. <laughs> he didn't manage to hit through that. Okay, so now we do this again. We do pixel either. And then we just imbue. Celtic wheel. And I think this should take care of him. Chain lightning. Nice. Alright, done. Uh, wow, very, very dangerous monsters here. Ooh, okay, so this is Erebus. 
Override accepted. Good. How considerate of my grand grand makers to use such conveniently derived energy for their labor. If I didn't know any better. Oh, but I do. <laughs> now, that was more like the reported undead. Ah, cycle berries. How did that rebus? Intruders detected. Lockdown in effect. Ah, now look what you rude birdies have done. I would hesitate to settle for calling you pigeons, but if your migration gets any more predictable, not your best term of phrase. Oh ho. Face palm. I said I didn't mean it. It nonetheless warms my heart to have influenced you so profoundly. So the head creep really did come back. What does it take to get you to leave? Since you're asking so nicely. Hmm, isn't that guy supposed to be a lot more dangerous and a lot chattier? Reverse is always up to something, but I'm more curious about why they walk away instead of vanishing, or knocking us out, or sending transmorphers in. Not toying with us in any way is doubly suspicious. Defense fuel failure, rerouting power to active defenses. Scratch that last part. And yes, Project E Tempest Droid. Huh. Oh, this is this the boss? Okay, I think this is the boss. So, we'll get into our... Okay, we don't have a full SP bar, unfortunately, but... Uh, this guy only has 4,300 HP, which we should be able to deal with, okay? Let's see how much damage he deals. A security robot from a mysterious technological outpost. It seems to make up for the loss of its basis barrier to sheer offensive power. It seems to have some cool tricks under its sleeve. Under its sleeve? Okay, soft damage cap. Okay, so yeah. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do all the blocking stuff because I don't know what to expect from this new from this monster. He did get a boss boost, which means uh he should he's definitely not someone we should take lightly. And I wonder if this is the last boss of the quest. Let's see. Okay, uh we'll do Moonwalker. We will do Imanok as well. Nope, not enough. SP, whoops. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's see here. What else can we do? Man, it's been so long since I last did this. Uh oh yeah, we have to use this, right? It's pardon reinforcements apprentice. Okay, bolster my defenses. Pets will have twisted pig drake out. Let's bolster my defenses as well. Okay, now shields, uh, armor, we go in our Fujin armor. Shields, we will use, what shield do we want to use here? Which one gives us the most blocking? I can't remember, wait, I can't swap out this armor, but it's fine because we are not going to get hit either way. Okay, so I think I will stick with this Evolve Protector Shield just in case he hits true. I don't know if he will. Hopefully he doesn't. Okay, so now what we want to do is get a little bit more SP first. We will do Power Gauntlet. Crush, we will do... Bag of Mixed Nuts is not going to do anything on the first turn, so we are not going to use it here. Uh, Shadow Feeder Pendant now, I guess. Shadow Feeder again. Okay, three rounds. Now we do Purple Rain. Uh oh, come on. Okay, nice. So let's see here. Uh, what do I want to do? Bag of mixed nuts. Let's do the walnuts. And skills, we can do wall of wind. Disappears if you switch armors, right? So just remember not to switch any armor. Let's gain a bit of SP here, and let's use bright slayer duck. And for weapons, well, I guess it doesn't really matter which weapon I use. Oh, we can do Big Dictionary, right. Let's do... Panoply. And we will just hit him regularly. Okay, so you shouldn't be able to hit through these defenses. This is some crazy defense. Okay, over 100 defense. Yep, bring it on. What do you have? And yep, he's taking damage from Bright Slayer Duck. Very nice. And attack. And now I want to use Pixel Eater, gain back a little bit of MP. Oops, out of SP now. Let's gain a little bit of that as well. Bright Slayer Duck. And we're getting the defense boost. Engaging Overdrive. 
Yep, that did nothing. Nice. Okay, so he can't be stunned. Uh, we still have celerity left, so that's good. Items, I'm going to do... We still have one more turn of Wall of Wind. So let's do Pixel Eater, gain back some SP, some MP, sorry. And let's do this. Did he just give us more celerity? Hold up, did he just give me more celerity? Wait a minute. Did I have so many rounds of celerity? I don't even remember having 4 rounds. Hold on, something is up. Huh. Something is definitely up. I don't remember having so many rounds of celerity. That's weird. Let's do this again. Uh, plus Nan. Okay, a little bit of a bug here, AQ stuff. If you're watching this video, what is going on? How, how am I getting Nan to blocking defenses? Does it mean I will block it or will I not block it? Now you got me a little worried. If I can't block it, then I might be in a bit of trouble. Okay, uh... So, okay, I will just continue to stack it. Let's see if it works. Let's do... Panoply again. Okay, now we got plus 30. Hopefully that's enough. Still over 100. MRM though. That should be enough, right? Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drink a health pot. And I think I will drink a mana pot as well. See, that's the beauty of this build. <laughs> it doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter what special ability he has because I am just going to ignore every single thing. Nice. So let's get a bit more SP. Let's get our Bright Slayer dog out. And you can just slowly chip away. Sure, we are not doing a lot of damage, but it doesn't matter because you are not taking any damage either. Okay, so we'll drink our MP pot. Overdrive operation exceeded. Circuiting coolant. Okay. Nice. So we still got more celerity. That's great. But he's going to do his SP attack again next turn, which gets me a little bit worried. Let me just go ahead and refresh my shield. Here, let's do Wall of Wind. Yep, 30. Let's do this as well. 54. Okay, I feel pretty comfortable now. Preparing to vent coolant. Oh boy, okay, I have a feeling it probably is going to be some sort of a nuke next turn. Yeah, it's probably going to be some sort of a nuke, let's see. Oh, okay. Yes, it is some sort of a nuke, and for some reason, oh! Oh, now he gains a mana shield. Oh, no wonder he wasn't taking any damage. Huh, that's interesting. Very interesting. No wonder he wasn't taking any damage just now. Okay, okay, so that's how I want to play it, huh? Mana shield, that's okay. Oh, whoops, oh man. Forgot to heal my MP before that. Oops, a daisy. Huh. 3 HP damage ends in one turn, alright. We still got Wall of Wind for one more turn. Uh, shall we refresh it? Let's refresh it. Does it cost a turn for me to use this? I don't think it does, right? Yep, okay, it doesn't. Now we switch to Bright Slayer Duck. This one, however, uses a turn if I'm not wrong. Okay, yep. And we'll just let Bright Slayer Duck slowly chip away at the damage here. <coughs> So it looks like he has an ice attack and some energy attack. Cool. Okay, and he has a mana shield as well. Oh, okay, very interesting. But he's dead. Very nice work. Tell you what, I'll help you get in there if you need me. If you'll help me carry that robot back to the hangar. The thing about this build is that 
you don't get hit means you technically won't be able to see what special effect the monster has but at the same time I am basically invincible <laughs> alright the plating's impressive and the weaponry is decent but I could oh just wait until I get it to my workshop at least it means I won't keep failing at random bosses which I don't know what they'll do okay like in the past with the fully offensive build, i just get utterly destroyed by some random element nuke that came out of the monster from nowhere because doing the first doing the quest for the first time going in completely blind you obviously won't know what to expect but for this build you don't care okay because the monster doesn't hit you it doesn't matter what he what special effect he has what random element nuke he has even if it hits you with harm or void damage it doesn't matter all right Deal, I can't wait to see what you can do with it. In true detector. Oh, come on, what now? Oh man, again? Fish guts. Okay. Huh, interesting. We have a fish here. So we'll switch to Hydromancer. And we'll do Celtic Wheel. Let's get started. Turn into a powerful evil version of itself by a transmorphic device. This innocent little goldfish wants to eat your guts. Oh no, you don't. Oh no, you don't. Okay, energy. Weapons, we'll, we'll just do this normally. I don't think we need to do anything special. Let's hear about SP. Chain Lightning. I guess we can make use of this monster to try and heal some SP back. In case we get another boss fight. Okay, he's not doing a lot of damage, so that's fine. And the uh, this guest here, the Doomquake minions, they use MP, they don't use SP, so that means I can heal my SP just fine. Oh, 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 hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, holy crap. Okay, I should play this a little bit more carefully, but I think he's still not doing enough damage to be a threat, so that should be fine. Okay, done. Uh, next one, Fish Guts again. And this time we have no MP to deal with it, but it's okay. We can just drink an MP pot over here. Planish some SP, that's nice. <coughs> Whoops, oh, I'm going to need more MP for that, okay. Maybe I should let this heal some MP instead. Okay, transform into Gyarados. <laughs> and do that. I am going to drink a HP pot. Uh, technically, I don't think I need to, but you know, it's a just in case. And done. Really shouldn't have said anything about not being toyed with. Alright, let's crack this open. If there's any security left, I can probably disable it before it regains power. Chances are there's something awful to stop here. Emergency wipe, 94%. I've seen this before. This isn't Makisa style. This is a Vesperian outpost. Emergency wipe, is that what it sounds like? Blast, I'll try to stop it and figure out what's going here. You let me know what you can find in the other one. Okay, so let's search around. What does this red button do? Whoa, don't go hitting random buttons, especially the red ones. There appears to be some fun here. Okay, wow. Personal log entry for day three. This is the only time I ever type the name Observation Post Tempest unless ordered to. And write it only to dig digitally scream about how terrible of a name it is. I was told this glorified locker will be built into a remote ruin that suits our purposes. But I'm apparently the only one who has done enough research on Lost Pantheon and history to know why you don't want to give this name to something built into a Talados outpost. The building team was all too eager to depart when we arrived to set up. They weren't even informed about what world this is. In fact, their telemetry was altered to spoof another planet's readouts. For their own safety, I'm told, it makes sense. If they don't know what we are doing and things go wrong for us, any divine retribution is likely to pass them. As important as our work is, you really don't want to have your infrastructure people uncreated. So we downright pamper them when it comes to security. Dr. Percy. P.S. I need to check on Miva, the roboticist. 
she took one look at our security systems, started saying a lot of colorful words and <laughs> locked herself in her workshop. <laughs> oh man, colorful words. PPS. She came out with a bigger, better robot with freaking lightning fissures. I think I'm in love. Boundary investigation. One does not enter the ranks of the alpha expecting to have a lot of time for personal research. Our purpose is involved, consuming even. Unfortunately, my innovation is in dimensional containment and Magitech correspondence had the opposite effects of what I intended. I'm officially too good to promote and have been assigned not to the paradigm circle, not even deployment initiative, but an observation post. The logic be being that laws frequent alterations due to uncreation will force us to develop correspondence and translocation solutions in situ. Which, while true, is not a one-woman job. I can get the data and understand it better than anyone outside the paradigm writers, then write proposals based on it. But instead of having the team to develop a solution to interplanar communication from a world with heavy interference and displacement from uncreation, I get to send up my professional opinion. Then some stuffy old Vesperian will do the actual development, send it back for review, and I'll have to explain to the arrogant coot that just do everything from the astral is not a solution. If you want to create a god, you should know better than to think you're already as smart as one. All of that aside, there are some bright minds here. Even though only Dr. Percy is proficient with local magical practices, I will have to requisition some of their spare time to assist in an investigation of these lost boundaries. There is some disturbing overlap with one of the big no-nos. Elemental collapse scenario, the kind of place you get fired for joking about opening a portal to Mira. Project Epsilon. In my time for working for this, in my time working for this initiative, I've come to a perhaps controversial stance on the Epsilon project. What we are doing is wrong, in irredeemably. Most in our ranks are unaware of how targeted the project itself is. Technocrats true and true, these are daring innovators whose worlds don't deserve them yet. To them, artificial apotheosis is the logical extreme of taking evolution into one's own hands. The man-made god is a the ability to respond to unjust paradigms and visionless oppression by developing new paradigms. So it looks like there's a lot of talk about uncreation here. And it almost seems like they are, I don't know if they are talking about the devourer or they want to do something similar to the devourer. It kind of sounds like they are trying to do something similar to the undevourer in this project of sorts, which obviously can't be good, right? But let us continue reading on. But Epsilon isn't merely the creation of a god, it's the usurpation of a god, a very specific god, a god that doesn't deserve this. In all my studies of various pantheons, god wars, and divine paradigms, I have scarcely heard of a de deity this gentle and caring. My peers in the paradigm call care, care not. My subordinates ignore that I'm even a part of such an in innermost circle. But we have seen the future. In time, even the anathema will fail, and law will spill forth a tide of tyrants to the stars. And so I condemn a beacon of good to prevent evil. What others eagerly do out of ambition, I do as a duty, and I do it in absolute disgust. It's all I can do to hope that when the project is complete, I can ensure that Epsilon learns from that which is meant to replace Oren. Twilight Reactor well, I was right, and it's not good. It took a long expedition to the south, but we discovered an area with severe cross bleed. It's not a runaway effect, more like the aftermath of someone trying to cause it. Whoever stopped it clearly knew what they were doing, but they lacked the numbers or equipment to do much about the lingering consequences. The light slash darkness reaction thoroughly contaminated my Arcano electric generator, but the silver lining is that I could contain the sample easily enough. Excuse me. Since the conversion is manual for the field kit, it was safe to lock up and bring back. Found out there is some potent stuff. That's a technical term, as long as you don't get greedy with it. I want a better containment and make a round trip to develop a higher capacity reactor. The base needs a better power source. Mira. Status update. Multiple ships have crashed throughout the continent. Their origins are suspect at best. The core them are getting restless. They already dislike this site. Something about the psionic heritage of its original creators, Dr. Percy, uh, oft agreed with them about a uh, Teledotian aspect of this location and nature couldn't have remotely peaceful purposes. But this place is more eroded than my patience with the topic. Now, they have rather valid reasons with their kin roaming about the region. Now, there's a lot of talk about Teledos and the Teledotian civilization that has uh, links with Carnex. Okay, so Carnex is one of the main antagonists of AQ as well. Apart from the Devourer, Carnex is a big deal inside of uh, Adventure Quest. Also, the Teledotian set, okay, is a Mastercraft set that was released many, many years ago and was, if I, my memory serves, it was, their quest was based off somewhere underneath the, uh, the, like, in the ocean, yeah, it was 
somewhere underwater. Okay, so maybe we are rediscovering the ancient Talado civilization, something along those lines here. Very interesting. To make matters worse, I've confirmed reports of an order with ties to uncreator that hides, secures, or destroys any previously unaccounted for remnants of Talados. Oh, okay. So they want to destroy Talados. Hmm. Some good news at least, we have successfully transitioned to the new power source. The Twilight Reactor is as reliable as it is pre pretentiously named. I fear we will not get much use out of it if our secrecy is threatened any further. Oren. Diary. Today I have learned three things. Percy and I have the same password. Whoops. He signs even his own logs as Dr. Percy. So that's his last name too. He's Dr. Percy Percy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? He's either in love with me or my tempest joy. He talks about the robot more, so let's go with that. <laughs> okay. I see what you did there. Oh man. The core them are getting pretty nervous. One of them up and left. If you ask me, that's the smartest thing to do after getting cut off and losing members to the network. Me, I think I'll find my way to Venda. Nasty politics, but I've made some useful Jaeger contacts. Miva. Outpost termination. We have failed catastrophically. I was prepared to relocate us to a potential deployment site with a new construction team when the news hit. The project was launched. It had been launched for months. Sometime after we sent the data on the shadow universe phenomenon and the need to move, for, move further away from areas compromised by it, the process was initiated without me. It makes no sense. We still haven't figured out how to coordinate the paradigms of transcendence, correspondence, and co-location. Co they are still mutually exclusive in all of our models. And now we never will figure it out. Epsilon was manifested was manifest and studied. Definitions were updated to reflect it. The specifications are insane. True, but insane. It then disappeared, only to return completely different and take our core team with it. There's a localized disaster zone matching the data we sent where the labor laboratory was. I'm scattering everyone. I'll pray that they don't get caught up in the collateral, but then the gods will catch them. If this shadow ever passes, there's a fate that I'll reserve for myself. The only one left to be held accountable for anything. Oren. Okay, well, that is a lot of law. Hollow is working on it. Nothing interesting here, the sequel. Nothing interesting here. Uh, yes. What about this one? Tablet. This could be interesting. Hint. Lie to me. Huh. Yep, there is a pipe. Uh, huh. yes, of course. 22221, whatever it takes. Uh, the door you came through. Yes, is. Am I missing something? Okay, uh. I actually went to go ahead and read the spoilers for this, okay, and there is a hint somewhere, okay, I'm not sure if I actually stumbled upon the hint, maybe I didn't instead of the quest, but the password is uh, 557, okay, the, there is a hint somewhere that says 775, some, 755 somewhere, but I think I didn't stumble upon it in the quest, Okay, either that or I wasn't paying attention, but the password here is 557, okay? So for those of you guys, I know a lot of people have been asking about what is the password, this is the password, and just so you guys know, uh, this actually doesn't unlock any secret reward shop or whatnot, it's just more law, okay? So that's what we'll be going through. Confirm. Uh, uh, okay. What in the world? <laughs> Am I missing something here? Okay, this is the wrong password. You key in the correct password, you see this. A bunch of stuff. Uh, I think you have to figure this out yourself. It's some sort of a code. Let me see if I can find it for you guys. Give me a little... Give me a short moment, guys. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. Did they say anything about... What kind of stuff? Uh, okay, I can't really find it now, but I guess you guys can... I think maybe I'll go through it in the next episode. Yeah, I don't want to spend time looking for it now. I'll probably decipher this for you guys next episode and let you know. Uh, let you guys know what it says. Okay, so let's just continue. Someone here was studying the Shadow Universe, but it was primarily an observation outpost for Project Epsilon. I only got a few personal log files and some weirder partial entry sent over though. There's no saving the rest. That wipe did so many passes that they might as well have melted the drives. It's a shame that we missed out on what could have been some good intel to, uh, to use against Erebus. Trust me on this though, we are all better off with no one having this information. Because I can't and won't do what you do, Lawmaster. 
It's played out by the day how much it wears on you and how much you suffer, even if your freedom to sometimes persevere, uh, preserve your charges. I don't disagree with the principle, but it's not a burden I can carry alongside those are already responsible for. Are we on professional terms now, or is this uh, strictly <laughs> a little Oh my god, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this word, sorry guys. Either way, shall I too call you Walker now? Perhaps then you may see the irony of throwing the word freedom at me about this of all things. Touche, your suffering is no less relevant. Your love, th you love them too much for your own good. And because you know there is too much for their own good as well, you suffer all the more to give them solace. Still, fair enough, you are in a fract fractally tangled morass of divine politics. I can't imagine this one lifted restriction won't come with its own un un unenviable mess of consequences. I won't say freedom then. Correct or not, regardless how we each believe that we cannot be any other way, the time may be nigh for the guys to go. Your fashion makes his statement loud and clear, old friend. True detonation, connotation, on the other hand, is liable to sink out of your control. And certain it can be, uh, oh man, another big word. <laughs> Enough to make up for recognizing that the one who introduced the fashion will shape the message. And the law master throwing shade at the mysterious stranger's fashion sense. Wow. As if I should let such an upstart decide how I communicate. Kills desist in this in this uh grandiloquent prattle already save the heartwarming reunion and the humor for later. Is this on purpose or is this a typo? Kinda looks like a typo. Okay, maybe it's not. If the incitors of the calamity have returned, the time for chatter has long since passed. Okay, so it's not a typo, it's intended Raikkonen. Who is Raikkonen again? Have we seen Raikkonen before? Huh. They should be excised with extreme prejudice. Their manipulated puppets tracked down. All new strings severed. Our mutual con contact is making progress there, but Erebus is slowing him down. I do have some helpful intelligence to offer, restricted though I may be. Do bear in mind there is a margin of imprecision. The Pantheon is strained. The Galleon in particular is exceedingly busy. It's taking much of its attention just to make the precise changes necessary to preserve law and minimize loss of life when counteracting the rogue uncreator. However, he noticed the distinct lack of an invading front. Someone must have facilitated, facilitated their return. The signs of their activity are present and coordinated, but if they are not preparing to attack, they lack the means to avoid intervention. We have an advantage, but even if they are not to invade, we cannot afford to let them succeed at anything. Their plot must be uncovered, unraveled, and thwarted without playing into the shade's hand. I'm sure Ryusei and Korriban could tell you a few things about the challenges of pretending to fall for an insidious manipulator's trap. But, the, but that they have saved many lives doing exactly that shows that it's a possibility. Ooh, Maxwell, I see. To be continued. Okay, who is Maxwell? Who are all these people? I'm sorry if it came out before, but I don't remember who those are. E-Series Cryojet. Okay, uh, weaponized coolant vent system is now a personalized ice cannon. Concentrated flow mode, but it doesn't look that safe, okay? Now let me go through the items and see whether they are worth getting, okay. So first of all, uh, the E-Series Cryojet is a ranged ice gun, 0.8 times randomly and plus 5 BTH lean. Mastercraft effect is a skill compression. You toggle between a normal damage mode and a concentrated flow mode that deals extra 20% damage. But as you take ice damage equal to something something formula melee after attacking with the weapon. Basically this, uh, this means you get for example, then it gets adjusted by your ice resist and such. Assuming that 77% is your assumed second worst resist. Okay, so you take some ice damage according to your resistances, but uh, you can click on it to activate a uh, a toggle Okay, that lets you deal extra 20% damage. Hmm. I would say you can pass this up if you have the Blood Blades. This is not worth. The Blood Blades are way better than this, so I say pass this up. Okay, uh, of course you don't have Blood Blades for Rangers, so... Actually, no, I'm mistaken. Rangers, if fully offensive rangers are usually not that common. So if you are a ranger who wants to maximize on damage, then you can get this because we don't have blood blades in range form, okay? Now for the armor, the armor is the interesting one. It's a fully offensive energy armor, melee blocking focus. Mastercraft effect is a plus 105 initiative boost and pays 3 blocking. Okay, to compress two skills. The first skill is a standard spell type skill, locked to range and follows your equipped weapon for element. This charges 100% melee in SP. The second locks your weapon attacks to melee energy. This affects bows too and after your first attempted weapon hit, 
uh, if you do not currently have celerity on you, you'll pay 100% melee in SP and grant yourself and your miscellaneous item one turn of celerity. This can happen once per round and if you already have celerity, you still have your attacks locked to melee energy but don't pay the SP cost against celerity. Interesting. So I actually get this armor for sure. Okay, uh, because of the... What do you call that? The initiative boost. Okay, if you don't have Hydro Campus, or if you don't want to use Whispering Raymond, this is something else that you can consider using. And since this is level uh, power level 150, I'll probably get this as well. This also works a lot better for... That's right guys, you guessed it, Star Slayer. Okay, so for the Star Slayer monster that comes around every May the 4th, this is great because it means you have a higher chance of going first. At the same time, there's a good chance you won't get one-shotted by Star Slayer's energy attack. Because Whispering Raymond, if you don't go first, then you're pretty much one-shotted. Okay, so with this, uh, that issue can be avoided. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, very, very excited for this. Uh, I will take away the pet and the gas and the shield as well just to showcase the armor by itself. Okay, uh, we'll take this away. Pets will hide this. Armor, okay. H-Series Tempest Power Armor Shields. Ooh! Very, very cool looking armor. Wow, it's the exact same armor as that robot. Wow. Okay, I really love the artwork, man. This is like, not, not exactly Mac Quest vibes, but man, I, I love the artwork on this armor. Wow, fantastic job AQ stuff. I, I really like it. Man, okay, so weapons will get something that is uh that doesn't have any uh special. Okay, so this one, let's see here. We have 52 melee, 43 uh range and magic defense. Strong against energy at 39%. Okay, secondary resist your wind and ice at 54%. Tertiary resist we have light and darkness at 68%. Then fire at 83% and it is weak to water at 95%. 105 initiative bonus, fully offensive armor. Let's go. So let's attack. Two hits. Okay. Is it just two hits? Looks like it's probably just two hits. Yeah, I think it's just two hits, okay. Now let's do the skills. Missile Barrage. Very hard to dodge, okay. 392 SP. This one... it does Very hard to dodge. It does not say if it is an auto hit though. I don't think it is based off uh, the monster. It probably gets a boost to BTH or something. Huh. Follows your equipped weapon for element. Okay, so it's just a standard skill, I guess. It says it's very hard to dodge. Maybe it's get, it gets some sort of BTH boost, but I don't think it's auto hit. Second, okay. High speed assault mode, locking attacks to melee energy. Grant celerity if not already active. Celerity activation causes 392 SP per turn. Huh. Charming strike. Oh, oh that, that came from the weapon. Okay. Huh. So we got celerity. This is, is this a guaranteed celerity? Oh man. Wait, it says it doesn't work for pets and guessers. Let's test this out. Let us test this out. Okay, I mean, I think it'll be broken if it, were, if it works for pets and guessers as well. But it gives your weapon as well as your miscellaneous item an extra turn. Yep, it only works for you. Okay, you and your miscellaneous item and whatever items you have equipped. Okay, fair enough. So I guess it's not that broken in the sense that it doesn't affect pets and guessers, but at the same time, if you're not a beast master, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. This is guaranteed celerity, I think. I don't think there's a save or something. So yeah, there is no save for this, but of course you have to be in this armor, but you can still cast your spells, still use your weapon skills and all that. So uh, I would say this is slightly better than Shadow Feeder Pendant if you're not a beast master, but if you're a beast master, then obviously this is not that great, but for warriors, okay, okay, maybe not warriors because you probably want to use a blood circle armor, but for mages, this is pretty good, okay, this is pretty good. If I attack, I get the celerity, I can switch over, I still get celerity, right? Yes, I do. So, yeah, uh, your first attack has to be in that armor, obviously, to get the celerity, but your second attack, you can switch to a different armor, so, mm, 392 SP, I guess it's pretty good. 
So yeah, all in all, I would rate the armor a 9 out of 10. Initiative boost, very good. Celerity, it's a guaranteed one if you attack first using the armor. Skill, just a standard skill, nothing special to talk about. But the artwork for the armor, also amazing as well. So yeah, that is my review for the armor and that is this quest. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you guys would like to see more of such future content. Till the next time, I'm your host, Carbon Gaming. Peace out.